pure, authentic conversation. That's Soulfully Casual. So grab your favorite beverage, sit in your favorite chair. Here is your host, Matty Ice. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Soulfully Casual. I'm your host, Matt Freights. A big shout out to everybody watching on YouTube. Appreciate it. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and you can find all of my social media handles in the video right underneath my face. And for all of you listening in the podcasting world, a big thank you to you as well. You can find all of the ways to contact me in the show notes on wherever or whatever podcast platform you are using to listen to this show. Birthdays. That's what I want to talk about this week. So I should probably cop to the fact that you are listening to this on Thursday, February 17th, which is famously Michael Jordan's birthday. February 16th, however, is my birthday. I was born February 16th, 1983. I was born on the same day, not in the same year as The Weeknd, famous uh, artist, uh, musician, and player of the halftime show last year. My birthday is always something that I, I think a lot about as I get older, but the concepts of a birthday is interesting. If you think about the calendar year, 365 days, how many of those feel truly yours, truly special and unique to you? Most days that goes by, we feel are just, ne- they're the same. They are they don't really have a feel to them. They go by, we rinse and repeat a lot. I talked about this, I, I talk about this a lot actually, but birthdays, even I mean, even holidays. How many holidays feel truly special to you? Christmas, celebrated by millions. July 4th, celebrated by millions in this country. Any other holiday, you share that holiday with somebody else, with millions of others, because it's a a day and a theme that has been associated and established as something that is now a part of the fabric of society. But your birthday, it's the day you were born, the day your, your mother had you. You came into the world. It's your day. Even if you share that birthday with somebody else, unless you're a twin, of course, but if you share that birthday with somebody else, it's still your day. And every year that passes by, people say another year around the sun. But what does that mean? It means that we have lived another year. And in a calendar year, the earth rotates fully around the sun one time. And that's why we say I made it another year, another another trip around the sun. But as you get older, your birthday starts to take on a different meaning and not necessarily a somber meaning, but think about it. When you're a kid, your birthday is something that feels special because you get presents. You're excited for the attention that you get on your birthday. It's pretty typical, most kids like that. Most kids like being the center of attention. My son does. It's one of the reasons why we say the prayer before we eat, not because he necessarily wants to say a prayer before we eat, but because everybody holds hands and he gets to be the center of attention. And kids love that. They love getting presents. So their birthday is, of course, exciting. And when you're a kid, you get excited about having a party. You can invite your friends. You can go do something fun. When I was a kid, I loved to go to the arcade, man. That was where I wanted to go because I'm a gamer. I always loved playing video games. I always loved going to Chuck E. Cheese, playing skee-ball. That's just my jam. It's just my jam. And I used to love having sleepovers, being able to listen to music, stay up a little bit later than I used to. And when you're a kid, everything is so much more pure. It really is. And your birthdays are kind of like that. As you get older, become a teenager, becomes about hanging out with your friends in a little bit of a different way, becomes about the ages now. 16 is that first true milestone year. My mom thought 13 was a big deal. You become a teenager, but 16, it changes for you because now you can legally drive. Now you are all of a sudden thrust into this different place where you have something of clout, having a car, a license, being able to transport yourself. It's it's a feeling of true independence. And the years start to matter in different ways. When you're 18, you graduate, you're an adult, you feel like you can do anything, you register for the, the, not the secret service, you register for, I can't remember what the hell it's called. I think you get it. Anyway, you register for being drafted, how's that? Anyway, selective service, selective service. Anyway, but you're 18, you're an adult. You feel like you can conquer the world. And then the next one, you're 21, you can drink. Now you could drink beforehand if you're like me because you're in college, but 21, you can legally drink. Now when somebody says, son, may I see some ID? You can hand them a card and look at them and smile and they can't say shit to you. 
you have a feeling of power. When you're 25, it kind of does mean something. 25 is the first age where I think people start thinking about how old they are. Sure, you can start to rent a car by yourself, but who cares about that? Because how often do we rent cars anyway? But when you're 25, a quarter century, a lot of people have that quarter life crisis, they call it, and it start, you start to think a little bit. You're now out of college, most likely. You've just been thrust into the, working, the workforce. You're a part of society now. You're a cog in the wheel. You're not special anymore. You're, ex you're not exempt from all of the, the, the ills of life, paying bills, figuring out how to make ends meet. It's part of being an adult, and I think that's why a lot of people struggle at 25. 30 is the date that most people seem to struggle with for some reason. I think it's less so today. I know that it's cliche to say like 30 is the new 20, but being in your 30s now has sort of been thrust as that last year that you feel young or that you're considered young. I personally don't agree with it. And some people say that when you're in your 30s, you start to become old. When I turned 30, a lot of things did change for me. I partied so much in my 20s that it just it didn't feel right anymore. I met my wife. I got married. I ran marathons. I discovered podcasting. So many things have happened in my 30s. But your 20s, when you leave your 20s, it does feel kind of significant because your 20s is that time in which everything is on the table. You're supposed to try everything. You're supposed to do everything. Sowing your oats. And it doesn't mean sexually. It just means out in the world. You go travel. You mess things up. You come within this close of being in debt, right? But it's ultimately worth it because you've experienced life in a way that you're it, You're not really, it's not that you're not allowed to in your 30s. It's just certainly frowned upon because once you're in your 30s, where are you? You start to take inventory of where you are. And then you hit that age of 40 when it seems like everything changes. Birthdays change a lot too, because as you get older, you start to think about what has happened over the last year of your life, not just in what has happened to you, what's happened in the world, how fast time is going. I'm turning 39 this week. This is my last year in my 30s. I don't really feel this sense, ominous sense of, oh my God, I'm old. It just is. We're, we age. It's how life goes. We can't stop aging. Father time is undefeated. You're never going to defeat him or mother time, whatever. You're never going to be able to defeat him or her. But as I turn 39 now, and I think about the last trip around the sun for me, it's hard not to think about the things that have happened. Think about the last couple of trips around the sun for me. Two years ago, I wasn't a father yet. I turned 37 and I felt like, all right, I got some time. And then I was a father shortly after. 38, it was last year, still a pandemic, hadn't even gotten a vaccine yet. The world drastically changed in that time period. And here we are now at 39, the world still is drastically changed. At least my world is drastically changed. I'm a father, my son is getting older, but I've lost a parent and it changes you, it's different. And so this year around the sun has gotten me to thinking about life in general. Where am I, where's my life going? Where has my life been? And the concept of, do we wanna live in the past? I think as we get older, we generally tend to look into the past maybe a little bit too often. When we look at pictures of yesteryear, years past, decades past, even looking at baby pictures, we're looking at once what, what once was. And what once was is a great thing, don't get me wrong. But what once was is just that, it was. And there's so much of our life that we have to look forward to. And when I think about my birthday this year, I don't think about it in terms of I've only got one more year in my 30s. I've got to accomplish something. It's just a matter of my life is changing. I think I said on Drippin' Sports a couple of weeks ago, might have been last week, that Tom Brady retiring felt like a milestone in my life because Tom Brady had been playing football for 22 of my 39 years on this earth, more than half of it. That's significant significant in what has changed in the amount of time that he has been playing football at a professional level and yet he's no longer playing football at a professional level he's retired my life is changing and i'm good with it i'm really good with it are there things that i would like to change for the positive yes of course i've let my weight get out of hand i'm constantly working on myself through therapy and mental health and it's just always going to be that way 
You gotta keep it paramount. To me, working on mental health is the same as working on your muscles, working on your heart. You've gotta make it a priority. It's not just gonna fix itself, so to speak. But also one of the things I think about on my birthday is gifts. What, you know, they always ask, what do you want for your birthday? What are some, what are some things that you want? And one thing that I have come to love about myself is that on these milestone days, it's not about the things anymore, the way that it was when I was a kid. It's about what I already have, basically re-gifting myself what I already have. And sure, everybody likes to be gifted something that's meaningful, but I'm at a comfortable place in life where I can buy myself things if I want to, material things. But there are certain irreplaceable items in our lives that we just will never be able to replicate. Waking up every day, can't replicate that. That's a gift every day, not just on my birthday, but every day. My wife and son, being able to be on the same page with them and working through our differences, through love, through compassion, through understanding. It's not easy all the time. Being a dad isn't easy. Being a husband isn't easy. Marriage isn't easy, but it's something worthwhile. It's a labor of love. I talked about podcasting being a labor of love. And that's what marriage is. I'm thankful for that. That's a gift. I wake up February 16th. It's a gift then. It's a gift on February 17th. But it's something that I have. My health, my brain, this podcast, my creative abilities, those are gifts. They're gifts that have been given to me by life. I don't know who dictates life. I don't know if there is a God. But all that I know is that I've been gifted a lot of things. And so as I look at birthdays and I look at how they evolve over the time period of our lives, I've thought about where mine is. But then I also think about the future. How will I feel when I turn 50? How will I feel when I turn 60? How did my parents feel when they hit these ages? My mom just barely made it to 60. I don't know if she thought that she was gonna see 61. She didn't, but I don't know if she thought that or not. She hoped, I know she hoped. My dad is turning 75, 80 is right around the corner. It's hard to fathom. 80 is that age where you start feeling like your parents are on borrowed time, maybe. I don't know. And so I wonder what it's going to feel like when I meet, when I reach these other milestones. Will I reach these other milestones? But I'm happy. I'm happy on my 39th birthday. I'm happy to wake up to what I have. I'm happy to wake up and know that life has been good to me. I've been good to the people in my life, even if I'm not perfect. And it's a gift that I hope to continue to give others. I want to continue to gift the best version of myself that I possibly can. And I don't know, something about birthdays. But let's be a little bit more lighthearted here. Birthdays, cakes on birthdays. All right. I feel that everybody has a preferred cake in mind on their birthday or some kind of a confection, I should say. And I'm a cake person. I'm a dessert person in general. And so I wanted to go through some of my top five desserts and things that I like to have on my birthday. So number one, and this is in no order, is Funfetti cake. Absolutely love Funfetti cake. I love Funfetti anything. There's just something fun about it, for lack of a better term. I love it, I love the way that it tastes, I love the way that it looks, I love cream cheese frosting. It's just fun, you can give it to me in a cupcake, cake pan, whatever, I'm all in. So if somebody asks, what kind of a cake do you want that's a traditional cake, just out of the box cake, Funfetti all the way. If I'm looking for something a little bit more indulgent, now I will say this, indulgent, but not necessarily at that elite level. My favorite ice cream of all time is real cookies and cream ice cream. Now don't give me any of that low fat stuff. I want full fat, real cream, let's go. I love it. So if I'm gonna take Funfetti cake a step forward, if I'm gonna have cake and ice cream, I'm doing Funfetti cake with the real frosting, and real cookies and cream ice cream. So that's where we're going. When I wanna take things to a real next level, then I'm looking at carrot cake. Carrot cake is definitely on the list. Now my wife is a great baker and she has made a lot of things for me. I love a good carrot cake all year round. This does not have to be a fall thing. I'm, I'm not here for people to tell me that carrot cake is a fall thing. No, carrot cake is awesome. I love cream cheese frosting. I just love everything about it. The raisins, it just is, it's, it's light, it can be heavy but it can be light at the same time. It's just different, it's unique. I love the spiced cake, everything about it is great. So if I wanna take things up from the store-bought boxed cake and ice cream thing, and we wanna move up a little bit, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna pair that with some gelato. 
That's what we're gonna go with. So that's if I really, really, really wanna get nuts. Now, if we wanna talk about indulgent with a lot of opportunity for improvement, we're going cheesecake here. I love cheesecake. It's my favorite dessert of all time, mainly because it can be done so many different ways. If you've been to a cheesecake factory, you know there are so many different things that they can do with cheesecake that probably God never intended to happen. Sometimes for me though, a plain cream cheese, New York style cream cheese with a little bit of fruit, like a fruit glaze or something like that is where it's at. But I'm not gonna say no if you wanna make a Snickers cheesecake or a s'mores cheesecake or whatever, I'm here and I'm willing to try it. And my wife has done it. By the way, if you want a really, really great idea, make Greek yogurt cream, a Greek yogurt cream cheese ball. God, Greek yogurt cheesecake balls. I can't speak right now because I just want that stuff. It's amazing. Now, some birthdays, milestone birthdays, maybe not 39, but 40, I'm going big. And my wife likes to make this seven layer cake. See, I feel like if you're gonna celebrate a birthday, if you're one of those people who likes to turn it up on their birthday, I turn it up on the milestone birthdays. 40's big, I wanna celebrate making it to 40. Not necessarily overindulgent to where it's a me, me, me party, but I'm talking about make a huge ass cake and let's just, let's go nuts. Let's go absolutely nuts. And she makes a seven layer cake, which has, I think, two layers of cookie, chocolate cookie, two layers of chocolate cheesecake, two layers of chocolate cake. My friend Lee, who's listening, knows exactly the cake that I'm talking about. A layer of peanut butter frosting with peanut butter frosting over the top of it. Call it a day. Give me the cake. Give me the spatula and a fork. I'm eating the whole thing, and we're just going to town. I may just go into a coma on my 40th birthday, but if we're going to do it that way, that's it. So those are some of the things that I love. If you want to know the recipe, reach out. You can find the social media handles here on YouTube. Socially, socially.casual at gmail.com is the email. I haven't said that in a while. And of course, mattysmedia.com. You can find me, find all the other podcasts. What do you like? What do you like to do on your birthday? Do you go out to the club? Do you like to go out to eat? Do you like to just eat desserts? Let me know. If anybody has a birthday that they are listening today, happy birthday to you. And congratulations on making it another year and another trip around the sun. But always remember, it's not just about the birthdays that have passed. It's about the birthdays that are going to come and the gifts that you have been given, not just in cake, but just in life in general. So short episode this week, just kind of winging it. I appreciate everybody's time. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. It means the world. And if you're in the podcasting world, subscribe, rate, review, tell your friends. And I would love for others to listen. So take care, everybody. And I will see you in another trip around the sun. Peace. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Soulfully Casual with Matt Freights are those of Matt Freights and his guests and not necessarily those of the Matty Ice Media Network. Soulfully Casual with Matt Freights is exclusively owned by Matt Freights and is brought to you by the Matty Ice Media Network.